Welcome back everyone, Michael here with Offshore Citizen. Today I'm going to discuss with you how to decide which Caribbean Citizenship by Investment program is best for you, if that is the direction that you're going. And so this is something that we help people get all the major Citizenship by Investment programs, the official ones, the unofficial ones, I don't know, there's probably 12 different ones, something like that, uh, that we work with. And so that's great. And, you know, we often have people call up and say, all right, like, which program is best for them? So to me, there's a common kind of decision-making flowchart matrix that helps to understand, at least in the Caribbean, which option is best for you. And so I'm going to go through that with you today. The thing that you might want to go and check out is I've done some reviews on various of the different programs. I still have a couple more to do, so I will get to them uh, over the next little while. But you know these are these are things to consider on the way. So let's dive in. Before we do that, if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button, hit the all notifications so you don't miss out on any of our videos. If you'd like help with figuring out where to relocate to, if you'd like a residency, a citizenship, if you'd like to optimize your tax, if you'd like to set up companies abroad, build corporate structures, etc., please reach out to me. You can book a call, calendly.com forward slash Michael dash Rosmer, link in the description below, or send a message to our websites, offshorecitizen.net or offshorecapitalist.com. Okay, so uh, let's imagine you are coming in to the, uh, the decision-making matrix. Let's assume for the sake of this argument that you're not gonna do Vanuatu citizenship, which is one of the you know uh, other ones, it's an option there. Uh, although I can throw that into the decision tree for you as well if you want. Uh, and you're not going to do Turkey, although Turkey is, I think, you know, a nice backup plan B type option. I don't think it's usually a principal choice for most people. And you're not going to do Northern Macedonia. Uh, you're not going to do Malta. You're not going to do uh, something like uh, Montenegro. Uh, and you're not going to do unofficial ones, Georgia, Ukraine, uh, Hungary. Hungary's closed right now. but you know, these types of things, okay? Let's assume that that's your situation. Okay, so what would I say? Well, we can start by immediately looking based on price, okay? So the cheapest option that we can get is St. Lucia, all right? So if we're saying you come in and if price really matters to you, uh, you would go out the St. Lucia route. Now, normally what I would say is that most of the people we deal with are going for St. Kitts, right? So St. Kitts is the best passport and I think is uh, the best value uh, among the passports if that's an option to you, okay? So usually what we do is we'd come in and we'd say, all things being equal, somebody's probably gonna go for St. Kitts and the majority of our clients who we're helping uh, are doing that. This being said, uh, it does cost more than St. Lucia and so it's not a dramatically large amount more, but it's some more. And so if the price is really a big difference for you, then you would do St. Lucia, okay? St. Lucia is kind of like, that's why you would do it. I would say that if the money doesn't doesn't matter, or not not that money doesn't matter, but if you're willing to pay an extra, you know, it's not that much extra, then you usually wouldn't do St. Lucia. So we don't do St. Lucia with people very often. It's more of a hassle to get a St. Lucian citizenship. It's a lower quality citizenship. It typically takes a little bit longer than St. Kitts. So, you know, the only reason to do it is because of price, okay? Then we might say, okay, well, what if you can't qualify for St. Kitts? And normally, there's a couple reasons for this. Number one would be your uh, nationality, okay, uh, or place of birth, okay? So for instance, Iranians are not allowed to have St. Kitts. It's really, you know, discriminatory and stuff like this, but that's the way that it is. So people from certain places just can't get St. Kitts. So then those people are going to not be able to be included or uh, maybe their source of funds is an issue. So maybe you've only ever made money in crypto and you can't show some other source of funds that's workable. St. Kitts has a stricter criteria there. So then you would probably go to Dominica, okay? Dominica, still, you know, uh, perfectly good citizenship, you know, not too expensive, a little more expensive than uh, St. Lucia, but St. Lucia also has more strict criteria as well. So uh, for people who kind of like can't make it into St. Kitts, often Dominica becomes the option for them, okay? Then we go down a little bit further. We say, well, maybe you're in a situation where E2 visa access to the US is important or visa-free access to China is important, okay? If those are the case and you're willing to pay a little bit more, then Granada becomes the option for you, all right? And the last one is Antigua. 
Uh, and the case of Antigua, usually we're looking at, you know, looser criteria for being able to get uh, extended family members in there. So you get a broader range and therefore that would be the option. So generally speaking, I mean, the system is pretty efficient in, uh, in St. Kitts. Uh, you, if you want to, can pay the extra 17500 and get the accelerated program. So that makes it a bit faster, which is good. And off you go. Now, if you look at uh, Vanuatu, Vanuatu has the distinction of being a little bit faster still. It's the fastest out there. So if time is of the super essence for you, then you'll probably do Vanuatu. Uh, and they're, they have to be fairly flexible in who, terms of who they accept. So that would pretty much be, I would say, your overall picture of what, uh, what the options are for the Caribbean and we're including Vanuatu, the South Pacific. So yeah, if you're just thinking like, what am I gonna do? How should I make this decision? That's how I would do it. I would ask, okay, do you need to include extended family, right? Uh, you know, beyond your initial, initial family members. Uh, are you in a situation where the money is really an issue? Do you need visa-free access to China or to uh, E2 visa access to the US? Uh, and you know, are you able to uh, pass the due diligence? And that's kind of like, which is required for, for St. Kitts. And these things are gonna provide you like filters of like, okay, go here, go here, go here, go here, okay? So obviously beyond this, there's just personal preference. Some people are like, hey, you know, I really like Antigua. Okay, like great, if you really like Antigua, awesome. Go for Antigua. But this is usually the best, uh, the best way to decide. So I hope that's helpful. I'm going to look forward to seeing you guys on the next video. If you'd like help with getting any of these citizenships, please reach out to me. Again, we can help you with any of them. Uh, I've mentioned before, we can help you with, if you want to pay with crypto, we can help with that, uh, as well as, you know, a variety of other things. So, yeah, happy to help and discuss with you. You can reach out to us, either book a call or send a message to our websites, and I'll look forward to talking to you very soon.